Over the course of 10 years, police say Megan Huntsman gave birth to, then killed, at least six babies. From 96 to 2006 and murdered each one. I don't think he's the father of many of these kids. How did he not know? She might be in fear of her life. I don't know how something like this can even happen, but it did. And six more small cardboard boxes were discovered by police, each with an even tinier body inside. Ten children in ten years, and all the neighbors said she looked skinny to them at all times? I don't think so. Keeping you updated on the Utah mother accused of killing her own babies. Seven bodies of babies left in a garage. And new revelations we're finding about her husband says they're not his kids. And this woman, Megan Huntsman, also has a boyfriend. He supposedly stunned. We're hearing from a neighbor because they were living together uh, and have been since 2011. The neighbor says uh, this about the boyfriend. And how is the boyfriend doing now? Um, he's, he's in shock. Um, he feels wow. betrayed, um, lied to. Um, that Saturday morning before all this had unfolded, he was getting ready to go to his mother's um, funeral and come home to, to this. So there you go. Still so many questions. We're joined now by Dr. Eric Fisher, psychologist. Dr. He, he, hey, doctor, let's take a look here at, at some of the theories, and then uh, we'll talk about it when we come right. back. I don't think he's the father of many of these kids. So that's really the million dollar question is, is how did he not know that she was pregnant? Is she a magician? Is she hiding her pregnancy so well that no one noticed her giving birth seven times? Maybe these are children that she had with her, the man she was having an affair with, because remember, she's technically still married. How are we so sure that these children are hers, given that he has a history of rape and sodomy? And I've heard those rumors that maybe these are her teen daughter's kids and she was just trying to cover for them. She might be in fear of her life. And there you go. Those are some of the theories or prevailing questions. Is he the father? He says he's not. How could he not know that his own wife was not pregnant? And is she even the mother? Was she pregnant? Dr. E, what do you make of this confusing situation that seems to get uh, just more convoluted as we go? I think we have to look at our idea that we want to know things. And when we don't have answers, we want to find those answers or come up with our own answers for those things. I think in these situations, it's really important to let the evidence play itself out, to find out the information and see what's playing. But I think really from all this conjecture that's going on, people just want to know and figure out things, like I said, kind of be their own sleuth, their own detective. Yeah. Um, well, one of the questions coming off that is, you know, how, how do people not know she's pregnant? Uh, we had a chance to talk to Sandy Wall. This was a woman who lived next door to Megan Huntsman for 14 years. I think the driveway's even connected. So here's what she had to say about that. And she kind of cuts both ways as we listen, Dr. E. Boy, she's put on some weight because she's really very tiny, like 100, 105 pounds, five foot four. And I said to myself many times, boy, she looks pregnant. Many times said that to myself, but no baby ever came that I knew. And you kind of dismiss it out of your mind. Your first two children, you did not know that she was pregnant. Um, one person said, well, we have to go meet Megan at the hospital. And the other person said, why? She's having a baby. So there again, Dr. E, on one side, this neighbor says she thought she might have been pregnant, but then uh, when she was pregnant with her first two children that actually lived, nobody even knew about it. So, I mean, what do you make of that, the whole concealing of a pregnancy? Well, you know, one of the things that uh, in, in reading the background of the case is that they some people don't think that she's necessarily has a mental illness but to do this and have all these pregnancies and have all these murders she says there's something going on there but why she would conceal pregnancies there, if there was a history of other lost pregnancies or if there's other things going on in her history that we still don't know about i think it's important to make sure that as we come up with ideas of why she would conceal pregnancies we understand her story and that story may or may not ever come out mm -hmm. one of the things we have to look at here is her real her feel and her ideal self her real self you know was not many people really saw 
her ideal self is what she showed the world, even in concealing concealing these pregnancies for whatever reason. She didn't want people to know that, and she wanted people to see her in a certain light. So she had to present hmm. herself in a certain way to be seen a certain way. Really interesting. And we know that she has three daughters. Listen to this. This is again from the neighbor, Sandy Wall, and uh, doesn't paint a good picture of Megan Huntsman as a mom to those three, basically saying the daughters hate her. She was boozing it up on drugs. Let's listen. I know that they have not liked their mother for years. I mean years. Um, the mother was basically kicked out of the house and it was for alcohol and, and drugs. Just things spinning out of control on Dr. E. Yeah, definitely. And you have to realize this is potentially a whole lot of guilt and emotion this person was bearing. Mm. And also in the home, often we show more of our real self to them, but if we teach our children and in our family, we don't show what's really going on to the outside world and we keep it in the house, these kids may have been coached for years to not say certain things. You don't tell the neighbors what's going on. And that's the message in a lot of families, unfortunately, which allows a lot of abuse and a lot of really destructive patterns to go on sometimes for generations. Wow. Dr. Eric Fisher, always good talking to you. Dr. E, again, fan of the program. I'm sure we'll talk again soon.